Hi, my name is Vicki McCarty from Calico Patch Designs, and welcome to Mondays with Marcus. I'm so excited to be the first of the designers to be showcased, and I'm so thankful to be a part of the Marcus Fabric family. And I'm even more blessed to be able to design my own fabric. We're here today in my design studio to show you how to make my farmhouse fall pillow. Before I get to the tutorial, let me talk to you about patchets and show you some of the things that I've Since made I with Since I grew them. up making scrappy quilts with my mamma Nellie, I decided to design the patchet line so that I would be able to purchase one piece of fabric and it would all coordinate and make the scrappy projects that I love so well. The strips are all five inches wide, but the end ones are six and a half inches wide for borders and bindings. So if I want five inch charms, I have them. And if I want jelly roll strips, I can get two, two and a half inch strips of each color. So this is a bolt of my patchet fabric. As you can see, as I roll it out, I have, it's actually striped and I have eight different pieces of fabric on one bolt. These are exactly five inches apart. The end pieces are six and a half. So that's more for borders and bindings. So one bolt of fabric will give you eight different pieces of fabric that all coordinate. All right. So now I want to show you some of the things that I have done with my fabrics. So this is called Rabbit Patches Runner. This was on the cover of Primitive Quilts Magazine last spring, 2020. And this is my patchet fabrics with um, an aged muslin. Okay. This one is another one of my patchets. And this takes three different, no, it takes four different bolts of my patchet fabric, four different colorways, and it is out of my book called Calico Patches. This book, I'll have several things here I'm going to show you out of it, but this book has just the things that I've made out of my patchet fabric. This one is called Braided Snowflake, and it is made out of two different uh, patchet bolts of fabric, the blue and uh, tan, and the tan and tan. This one is called Barn Star Runner, and this one actually comes in two colorways, and I think you saw the other one at the beginning of the video hanging behind me. It's black and tan, and then this one is a red, white, and blue. This one is just Beautiful. I wish you could see it in person. Um, this is called my Dresden Plate Table Topper, and it is also in my Calico Patches book. And this is made out of three different patchet fabrics. The, the red and tan, the green and tan, and the tan and tan. And it has wool applique um, uh, holly, and the little uh, pennies are wool applique also. And I've got it as, it's kind of like a little 3D thing. I have my um, Dresden plate blades turned under. All right. So this one, I decided to make a Joseph's coat. And this one is made out of five different patches. Um, it's a lot simpler than it looks, but um, this one's also available. And then this one is my patriotic pinwheels. This would be a great um, quilts of valor type quilt because it goes together real quick. This one is made out of my uh, blue and tan patchet and my red, white, and blue, tan, red, tan, and blue patches. And then I've also taken my patchets and did a braided rug out of it. Very simply easy made, and I made it very, very long, as you can see. So these are just some of the things that I've made out of my patchet fabrics. Now the first thing you'll need to do is lay the patchet fabric out and cut the black and tan gingham strip off for the side border. You can see how easy it is with my patches. They are very straight and easy to cut with a six by 24 inch ruler and a rotary cutter. Once you have that cut, 
just lay it aside for now. Then you'll need to cut the rest of the patchets up in five inch by 18 inch strips just by cutting them on the line in between each stripe. Remember, the other salvage end will be six and a half inches wide, but we need it to be five inch strip. So go ahead and trim it down to five inches. When you have finished cutting the patchet fabric into strip, you will have the one six and a half by 18 inch black and tan gingham that you've set aside for later, and three tan five by 18 inch strips, and four black five by 18 inch strips, all from a half yard piece of fabric. For those of you that know me, you know I'm always looking for ways to make myself more efficient. You know the saying, so many quilts, so little time. Well, that's my life. So I will lay my strips out straight using the lines on my cutting mat to help me keep them straight. And I make sure to stagger them because that will keep the bulk down and that way I'm only cutting through a few layers at once. Then using my ruler, I make three five inch cuts and this will give me all the fabric I need to make the checkerboard piece for my pillow. You will need seven five inch tan squares and seven five inch black squares. So go ahead now and pair them up you will need seven sets of black and tan squares with right sides together. Then sew a scant quarter inch seam down opposite sides of each of the pairs. Place your ruler over one of the seamed sides and make a two and a quarter inch cut. Then turn your block around and make a two and a quarter inch cut on the opposite side. And you can just toss that little sliver in the middle away. To press them towards the black fabrics. Take the matching strip sets and sandwich them together, making sure to butt the seams up against one another. Pin at the seams. This will help make sure the seams match when you sew them together. Sew a scant quarter inch seam across the opposite ends, the ones with the pins in them. You want to make sure to remove the pins as you come to them. Take your block back to the cutting board and repeat exactly what you did before. Cut two and a quarter inch off the side, then turn it around and make a two and a quarter inch cut off of the opposite side. And again, toss the middle sliver of fabric away. This will make two four patches. Press the seams open and trim to four inch squares. Repeat this with the remaining six sets and you should have 14 four inch four patches. Now it's time to put our checkerboards together. So you're gonna to want to lay them out in two rows of seven. You might need to move them around a little bit to keep from having like ones together. And once you get them the way you want, pin at the seams and sew them up in rows. Press the rows in the opposite direction. And then you will need to sew the two rows together, pinning at the seams, and press. Now it's time to work on our applique. For you all that haven't done wool applique, it's not really that difficult. It's not much different than cotton applique, and you'll see how I do mine. And hopefully, if you uh, haven't done it and you're a little afraid and intimidated, this will take the fear out of it. So this is my choice for fusible when I do my appliques. Whether it's cotton or wool applique, this is the product that I like the best. But feel free to use whichever you like. You will want to trace all of your appliques onto fusible web and iron them to the wrong side of your wools and then cut them out on the drawn lines. This is another product that I can't live without, an applique pressing sheet. It's a Teflon coated sheet that I can fuse my appliques to and build up my project. There is not a wrong side or a right side to one and they'll never wear out. When I'm done with mine, I roll it back up and put it away each time. So we're gonna start by laying the applique pressing sheet on top of the placement pattern. You'll be able to see the pattern through the applique pressing sheet. I do my appliques in small sections and fuse them to my applique pressing sheet. This makes them easier to handle, as you will see later in the tutorial. Now you can start to build up the white pumpkin. As you can see in the picture, I started from the farthest piece in the back of the pumpkin, which is number three. With light steam seam 2, I pull the paper off the back of the piece and lay it in place on the applique pressing sheet to match the pattern. With the light steam seam 2, it has a little bit of tackiness to it and it will stay in place on my sheet. And that's one of the things I love about this product. Some of the others tend to move around everywhere while I'm trying to lay my applique pieces together. The pattern has been designed to be in numerical order as to which applique piece goes down first. And just like with any applique, you can see that we've left seam allowances to overlap some of the pieces. But this is what your pumpkin should look like. Now it's time that you can take your iron and fuse it right to the applique pressing sheet. Make sure to use the manufacturer's instructions if you're using a different fusible than I did. I use lots of steam and it takes lots of heat to get through this heavy wool. 
Now I just twist my applique pressing sheet around and leave the white pumpkin on there and move it over the small standing pumpkin on the placement pattern and repeat the same process. I start with the lowest number which is 15 and I lay all of them out in numerical order. You can see how easy this is. You're building your pumpkin up one fabric at a time and add the stem and fuse into place with your iron. Now as you can see I have added several sections to my sheet. I never peel them up until my sheet gets too full to hold more or I'm ready to put them all together. Once the sheet is cooled down you can gently peel up the appliques one at a time and it leaves the fusible on the back of your appliques and peels right off of your Teflon sheet. Then they will each become one big piece that I can control much better. So after I peel them up I just lay them aside with the right side facing down so that I don't get anything stuck to the fusible. Next you'll want to place the applique pressing sheet back over the top of the placement pattern. Lay the white pumpkin down in place first, then the standing pumpkin with the sunflower attached is next. And at this point you don't have to press anything together yet. I always like to wait until the end and make sure I haven't left anything out. Now we can bring in the pumpkin on its side and it's so easy when they're already fused into sections. Match up where it needs to be according to the placement pattern and lay it in place. Now you can add all the rest of the pieces and at this point stand back and take a good look at it. Look at the picture on the front of the pattern and make sure you haven't left anything out and then you can press all this together into one big piece. After the sheet and the appliques have cooled then you can peel them all up into one applique. This is why I cannot do without my applique pressing sheet. It is an essential in my sewing room. Now how simple was all that? Now it's time to put our applique onto our background block. So find the center of your 16 inch by 24 inch background block and lay your fusible applique piece down in place. Making sure to leave the left pumpkin stem four and a fourth inch away from the edge of the block on the left hand side. This will allow room for the lace that we'll add later. Fuse into place. With Steam -a Seam Light 2 I use lots of steam and high heat but I also turn the block over to the wrong side and press it from that side also. It seems to adhere better when I do that. It doesn't have to go through all the wool to get to the fusible. It just works better for me. Now the fun begins and this is my favorite part applying it to my background. You can do this by hand or by machine. Now when I stitch my wool by machine I will usually adjust my needle width and length longer and wider to make it look like I did it by hand. But on this project I stitched it by hand. You will want to go around everything with a blanket stitch and I use the Valdani size 12 pearl cotton threads. We have the thread kits for this project for sale on my website. Now this is a product I like to use called Sulky Tear Easy Stabilizer. I use this to add detail to my projects. Make sure to use tight stitches and a chenille needle to perforate the paper when you stitch. I trace the detail from the placement pattern and draw a little bit of the applique so that I can see where I need to place it. Then I pin it from the back so that my thread doesn't get caught in the pins while I'm stitching and add all of my detail. On the leaves, berries, twigs, and flowers I used an outline stitch and 12 weight thread. On the wheat stem I used a chain stitch and 8 weight wool thread. I just love how the wool adds the texture to my projects. Once the stitching is complete I gently tear it away. Sometimes it'll leave a little piece but I can just flick it out with my needle. So now that I have all the details stitched I'm ready to move on. I left all the pieces for my wheat applique together and thought I would just cut them out when I got ready for them. I've lost too many little pieces before. As I cut these out I just place them on my block. When I get them all in place where I like them it's time to press them down. Again on the front of the block and then on the wrong side of the block and then I stitch those down with a fern stitch. The asters I treated a little differently. I don't want the fusible on the back of them because I want them to be kind of three-dimensional. So I drew and ironed the freezer paper the shiny side to the back of my wool. Now freezer paper is a really good template material to use because it will adhere to fabric up to seven times before it, the stickiness wears off of it. Now I want to fuse the yellow centers in place in the middle of my aster flowers. You will want to draw three fusible circles extra 
of template number 34, 36, and 38. And what you're going to do with those is, if you'll flip the aster flower over, you want to put those little dots, fusible dots, in the center of the back side of your aster. What this is going to allow us to do is fuse them into place without fusing down our leaf petals. So we'll have that three-dimensional look. Now you'll want to start cutting small snips into the flower to create petals. Be careful not to cut all the way to the center, but about halfway in on all three of the flowers. Now you can peel the paper off the back of the flower with the little fusible dot and fuse them into place on your block. By not putting the fusible on the entire back of that flower, it allows that flower to be three-dimensional. Go ahead and blanket stitch around the center of the flower and add all your beads to your project. These are the colors of the Valdani Pearl Cotton that come in our thread kit. The balls are 12 weight and the skein is that luscious 8 weight wool thread that I like to use. Now it's time to put your pillow block together. Trim your applique block down to 21 and a half inches by 14 and a half inches. Make sure to leave four and a quarter inches from the laying down pumpkin to the left edge when you trim. Pin and place the four and a half by 14 and a half inch black and tan gingham and stitch it together. Press away from the applique block. Now it's time to add the lace. I love how it adds a little vintage look to this pillow. Mark a half inch line away from the gingham seam. I use tailor's chalk to mark my lines. I add them lightly and if I decide to move them, they'll brush easily away. Line up your lace with your mark and pin it into place. With matching thread and lengthening my stitch a bit, I just stitched a seam down the side of the lace. I turned my pillow top around and stitched the lace back up the other side, trying my best to keep my stitches on top of the lace so that you wouldn't be able to see them. All we need to do to finish the pillow top is to sew the checkerboard across the bottom. You just need to pin it in place and sew it on and then press. And this is what your pillow top will look like. Since I really like hand work, I decided to add a hand stitch detail up one side of my project. So using my tailor's chalk, I marked a faint line a quarter of an inch on each side of the seam. To make the cross stitch, I just used the chalk line to mark how wide to make my stitches. Now all that's left to finish our pillow is adding the back to it. So to place the back on your pillow, place right sides together the pillow top and the pillow back which is your 21 and a half inch by 26 inch tan muslin piece. Pin together to keep from slipping and stitch all the way around the pillow, leaving a four inch opening at the bottom of the pillow to allow for stuffing. Turn the pillow right side out through the opening and press. Make sure to poke the corners of your pillow out. Then you stuff your pillow with polyfill, making sure to fill out all four corners. And now turn a seam allowance in at the opening and whip stitch it into place. I hope you enjoy making the pillow. For the free pattern, it's available on my website at calicopatchdesigns.com, as well as kits and patterns for most everything you saw me show you today that I'd made with my patches. But before I go, I want to talk to you about my next line of fabric. It's called Garden Getaway. Ask for it at your local quilt shop, my name. It should be available, um, I think, February. This is going to be a six-month block of the month series with pre-fused laser cuts and uh, for your appliques. While visiting my website, sign up for my newsletter and more free stuff. And keeping up with Calico Patch Designs, we do a lot of free um, stitch alongs and I'd love to have you join me. So follow me on Facebook and Instagram at Calico Patch Designs. Be sure to like, share, and follow Mondays with Marcus in order to win great fabric door prizes. Be sure to join us next Monday for another great Marcus designer for a free pattern and tutorial. And thank you so much for watching.